Previously on Dungeons and Dragons. Who are you working with and who are you meeting in the forest? What, what, what are you talking about? He- help! Help! I think he punches him in the face. I think they're striking me! <laughs> help me! <laughs> Thaddeus knocks him to the ground. He begins he muttering it. an incantation under his breath. The only spy here is you, coward. I don't know what you're talking about. Thaddeus lets loose a ball of energy. So you are all under the allure of Zone of Truth. Yeah! I found myself face to face with this man riding the dragon. I begged for my life and he agreed in exchange for information on other settlements and that's where I was going tonight to meet him and tell him about you showing up. Where could they be? Gallandin comes forward and says, yeah, yeah, dude, there's probably a couple waterfalls in that direction. I want to go now. Perhaps we wait until morning. You guys all head to bed. Flint, starting on your chest, something you didn't notice to this point, is dragon scales. You feel like you're looking through somebody else's eyes. And Bork begins talking through you. I think we are becoming uh, what's known as one. Uh, what do you mean by one? If they're not taken care of in time, uh, the host disappears. How am, I, how am I gonna tell the group about this? Maybe, yeah, task at hand and then kind of put it next on the list. Alright, we start off in the direction in which he had told us. The waterfall is about 30 miles Help! You come upon this woman on the ground, and she has her leg trapped underneath a tree. Let's all let's all get in there. Let's all let's all go try and move this tree. Heroes at last! And the woman picks flowers from her hair and then twists her fingers to weave them into garland as she lays a garland around each of your necks. You begin to hear the waterfall off in the distance. You notice that there are thin spider web, and you look up into the trees and you see what looks like seven giant spiders and jumping down behind you three edder caps welcome to dungeons and dragons we are a fifth edition actual play podcast i am your dungeon master russ moore and with me today is carla johnson yay first out of the gate i'm carla i play new lara moonbrook and tom laird second place is the first loser damn it (laughs) uh yeah i'm tom i play flint firebeard I like these sayings. Okay, Amy, go. I'm Amy Moore. I play Thea Amastasia and Fridge versus Human. Fridge will win every time. We need. I want to hear the story. We have not heard it yet. This is it's. It's not an epic tale. I've been on the edge of my seat this whole time. I'm sorry, the anticipation's been up there, but it's it's not an epic tale. Russ is putting beer into the fridge. I was also putting things into the fridge. He lifted a beer case over my head, or what I thought was over my head. At the same time as I was getting up and I was like, I'm going to move out of his way. And as I stood up really quickly, for some reason, <laughs> um, the, I hit my head on the handle of oh. the freezer. Oh, God. Oh. Really hard. And I was like, I'm going to throw up. <laughs> I felt really dizzy. Uh, but we had things to do. We were going to rest the sisters. So I go into the bathroom to do my hair and I'm straightening my hair and I part my hair and I go out and then I look and it's all bloody. Oh, like I, I, the fridge took a chunk out of my head. Oh so my God. I've been like Ow. off and on like dizzy and kind of not feeling the best. And I think I jarred my body really hard too. Cause yeah. now I just have like aches just all over. Aye. So Oh. Fridge versus human. Fridge wins every time. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, Amy. I'm sorry to hear that. And now, now my uh, my heads my headset my headphones hurt where they rest on my head, so I'll be constantly adjusting them. So good. So how are you guys doing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not concussed. Not concussed. Yeah, so totally fine. Good. Uh, well, so good. This, just me then. Uh, so Liberty, Liberty After is this great new uh, sci-fi and post-apocalyptic RPG system from uh, our good friends over at the Liberty Podcast. Well, do they have a Liberty before? Um, well, Liberty is based in this this post-apocalyptic world, so it's it's like after. Mm. Or even endures. Absolutely. Yes, exactly. Tom listened. Yeah, both episodes. So they've got the podcast, which is Liberty Vigilance which Tom has obviously listened to by this point. Mm -hmm. Yep, I'm on both episodes. I've listened, and I think it is super great. 
Oh, the voice acting is awesome, and the whoever the narrator's voice is, it's on my iPad, so I can't look it up because I'm using it to Skype with right now, but it's just, uh, he's got a killer voice. Wayne June is that guy. Wayne June. Yeah. Amazing voice. He is from uh, what's known as the Darkest Dungeon. He plays the Game Master in there, which what they've done is uh, Travis, the gentleman who makes the podcast, uh, they played a game using the Liberty After RPG system. So it gives you a little taste of what you're going to get into in that system. Um, and then... Uh, just, you know, did what normal people do and wrote down everything they said in an RPG game and turned it into an audio podcast. And when Russ says, like, he wrote down everything everyone at the table said, like, he really means it because there's little asides that the people will make and you're like, oh, like, I can totally picture that somebody in the game, like, doing a little table talk and not as, like, part of, and they, it's all included in there. It's really cool. Yeah, it's a nice way to bridge audio dramas and actual plays, like what we do, where we, we just be ourselves. But they put it to a whole bunch of, they add a whole bunch of sound effects, like really good sound effects, like not what, you Really know, good sound the effects. The bird chirping that I use in the background to <laughs> cover up the don't dog. Don't you put us down while we're lifting <laughs> someone else up. You shut your mouth, Russell Moore. Anyways, uh, it's a much higher production quality than what you might be used to in some other actual plays. Um, but the whole podcast based around the RPG system, and in this RPG system, you get a whole bunch of new classes, weapons, uh, abilities, deities, poisons, enemies, and misfire charts all built into this that you can use and just go. Um, if you know the D&D rules, which is, I mean, you don't need to know the D&D rules. We are proof well, we of that. Don't. You do not yeah. need to know the D&D rules. Um, but you can just get this book, roll up, and uh, and have a good time. And another fun thing, which we didn't really mention uh, last time we were talking about them, is uh, once you are playing, you can submit your stories that you do, uh, and they could be built into the world's official canon, because they also do graphic novels, they do the podcasts, they do a whole bunch of other stuff that they could then take your story, and, you know, obviously, if you're submitting it, you're giving them permission, but, um, and then build it into the whole canon of what they have going on there. That is so cool. That Very is so cool. cool. You know what is, okay, so I, I, uh, I'm feeling, like, real pleased with myself that I'm going to DM one game. Excellent. One time. And these people, like, made a system. Like, that's crazy. Yeah. It's very impressive. It's, it's so impressive. Like, it's incredible. These people are crazy detail-oriented. Yeah, people are so creative and amazing. <laughs> There's an awesome scene in the second episode where this guy is, like, on a computer and he's looking up some information. But then he's also in, like, this simulation where he's on a computer also looking up information. And it's like super meta, but it's fantastic. Yep. So if you want to hear the podcast, or if you want to get any information on the RPG itself, the game system itself, you can go to libertyendures.com, or you can also find the RPG Liberty After on drivethroughrpg.com, or again at libertyendures.com. Go check it out. Super awesome. Another thing you can go check out is our community over on Patreon, patreon.com slash dumbdragoncast. We've got a great community going on over there, and we're on our way to our second goal, which you can help us reach. Whoa. Um, What's which, our second goal? Uh, when we reach $100 a month, we give away either uh, Xanathar's Guide and Mordenkainen's Tome of Foes, which is the new book coming out. Or you can get um, Rise of Tiamat and the Horde of the Dragon Queen adventure modules, the ones we are playing mm -hmm. through right now. Very cool. And if you win and you get those, no spoilies, please. <laughs> yes. I'm gonna say I don't want to get I don't want to get any Facebook messages and people being, being like, like, "Do this, hey dum dum." <laughs> this is what you guys have been so bad at this, hey dum dum. <laughs> Like, we know we're not that good at it. We're having fun, though. God. Yep. <laughs> we should say that in-game in anger. Everyone we're trying to help in Faerun. We're just playing a game here. We're just having, we're just having fun. fun. Just messing around. It's fine. The end of that's the world what, is a game to you. That's what really matters, right? Whether we win or lose, just that everyone has fun on. Yeah. You know, yeah. Like going that and the yeah. orange slices at halftime. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't play youth soccer, Russ? Come on. No. <laughs> sports. That Who was plays a sports? very emphatic no. Yeah. Impressive. Yep. Sports uh, are on this side. Yeah. 
music and role playing is on this side. Well, Amy, where is our sports podcast that you're hosting? Don't do that. I wouldn't be good at that either. I mean, I'm bad at this one too. Heck, fucking do a sports <laughs> podcast. It's Carla's idea. You have to do it together. Uh, <laughs> it would be it would be me and Carla going. A lot of sports thing is happening right now. Mm-hmm. They're sportsing really well. And now we throw to our guest Tom, who actually knows something who about actually sports. Knows Tom, quite go. a bit about sports. <laughs> sports corner. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Sporner. No. Or sport. sports. Yeah. So yes. if all right. I like that second one better. So if you join us on Patreon, we won't have Sports Corner. We promise. Um, but we do have a Goog Hang on the fourth Tuesday of every month. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I we love talk about that is. Is. We can talk about sports on that Goog Hang. Like, up yeah. to date. Oh, that's true. Up to date oh. sports scores. And, Absolutely. Um, yeah. um, nobody bring up March Madness, though, because I don't follow it and I have no idea what's going on. So just a heads up. We're going to talk all about March Madness. No, no, March Madness. No. It's yeah. a very popular and only sporting March thing. With where people play basketball. By the time this episode comes out, March Madness will have been over by like oh, two weeks. Thank God. So it'll be on TV all day, yeah. every day. Exactly. Um, but yeah, you got that. And then there's the bonus episodes, the Dungeon Side Scrollers. We're going through a sweet adventure DM'd by Tom Laird, which is oh, hey, that's uh, me. pretty, pretty, pretty good. It's real pretty fun. Hilarious. It's real, real fun. fun. So you want to go check that out. Um, and that's that's really all I got. So fuck it, let's play some D and D. Yeah. Yay! Which there's uh, a, a design for a T-shirt in the works <gasps> f- yes! for that. Coming I want soon. that. I want that T-shirt. Soon. I would. I would. I wouldn't feel like I could wear it out. Well, oh, like no. I need Addy up from school. I, and like, yeah. I assume it'll have like an asterisk yeah, or like a thing, right? Yeah. That's how I want to design sort of. it. The, Profanity will be like the big F and then like the, like the at the black symbol bar and, and stuff or oh, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, so we'll figure out what that looks like. Coming soon. You guys are in the middle and I was not very precise on uh, the timeline that you guys took to get to where you are. So you guys were like fucking booking it. Hmm. Like you guys were running full tilt to maybe get we could 30 use, miles. Maybe we could use guacamole for some of that to help. Um, no, don't waste it. What if we need him? Because he's just teleporting us right now. Right? Right Fair right enough. Us? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yep. I don't want to have a, no, a guacamole no, I use. I take it back. No guac, no guac. Um, so it's it's no fine. Guac, no guac. But I was looking at like how fast you would have had to go to go 30 miles, and you guys would have had to have been like all out sprinting. So Maybe we were all out sprinting. Well, you Fabius were. is a very fit 70-year-old man. I think so, he is. Right? It's true. I picture him as like, um, so when I was running a lot, there was this very elderly man who was probably in his 80s who always was running at the track and he was in crazy good shape. And that's kind of what I picture. He also had like a beard and was like kind of a like hippie-ish kind of guy. And he did it. He was a much better runner than I was at the 33 years old I was at the time. So (laughs) that's Thaddeus. For me. Yeah, ab- absolutely. Well, like don't it. feel bad, Carla. He had like 70 years of practice. So. <laughs> exactly. Um, so you guys find yourselves in the middle of a whole bunch of spiders webs. Uh, from what you assume, you can hear the waterfall uh, off in the distance. You think you're, I don't know, you're a little bit away. So you, you, you're within earshot of the waterfall. So we'll just say that. Um, and you're surrounded now by three edder caps and seven giant spiders. Yay. Roll for initiative. Woo! Sixteen. <laughs> Six. Fourteen. Oh wait, fifteen because of my bonus. Uh, I who, was wrong. Uh, six. Uh, it's the uh, all right, Flint. You're playing Thaddeus. Oh right. Yep. And who's playing Flamykins? Russ. I'll play Flamykins. <laughs> I, well, I can I can play Flamykins, but we Flamekins can talk about one of you guys doing gets it. Gets twelve. Uh, ten for Thaddeus. Spiders get to go first. So they drop down uh, a ways from the canopy of the forest. They are going to shoot their web down. Each of you get shot at by one of the spiders. So that's one, two, three, four, five. So we'll go down initiative order here. New Lara, that is going to be a 12. Against AC? Against is- your... Uh, yeah, attack to hit. It's a ranged weapon attack, so that's against your AC. Okay, that does yeah. not hit. 
I thought you were Flint. telling me 12 damage for a second. I was like, come uh, nope. on! I haven't even done anything yet. <laughs> no, no, you missed. Um, and you're not allowed Flint, to. that's a 21. Uh, do I have any resistance to web-based attacks? I don't know. You picked your feats. Did you go web-based on this one there, Spider-Boy? <laughs> mm, pretty sure it did. Okay, nope, nope, so nope. you are restrained by webbing. As an action on your turn, the restrained target can make a DC strength check, bursting the webbing on a success. Uh, the webbing can also be attacked and destroyed. Uh, bu- bu- bu. But it's immune to psychic damage, just so you know. Okay, I'll no see mind that games. Mind. Yeah, for all no mind games. Psychic attacks. Flamykins is a 17. Ooh, yeah, that hits her. All right, she is also restrained. Thaddeus is a 20. Yep. Jesus. He is also restrained. Thea is a 13. <gasps> Not good enough. Not good enough, even without your shield. And then there are two more. <laughs> I wouldn't have time to pull my New shield. Lara for a 21, and Thea for a 7. <laughs> well, it's all fucking so you, Lara so. is also restrained. <laughs> I got you guys. Uh, so that's all the spiders. Um, and that's all they get to do right now. So, Nulara, it's your turn. That's all. That's okay. So, I'm restrained, and as sorry, on my turn, I have to. You can, as an action, the restrained target can make a DC strength check, a DC 12 strength check. Strength check. Okay. Yeah. That is a 12. So, you burst from the webbing, and you're not restrained anymore. Great. Um, I guess that is my movement, or... No, that's one of your attack actions. Okay, great. Remember how I already had my sword out and on fire because we were, like, burning We the, were uh, burning the... Because yep, we yeah, were sure gnawing into the things? Okay, perfect. So I will take my second attack. And so are they still a ways away? Uh, the spiders are right, like, above you. Um, I, they're, they're out of reach, but... Okay, and then what about uh, them at her cap? They're coming at you from where you were coming, uh, and they are they're within like fifteen feet, closing in on you. Okay, okay, so that's obviously within my movement. So I guess I'll attack one of those. Okay, uh, that is a twenty-three uh, against the other cap. Oh yeah, twenty-three will hit. Okay, that's seventeen damage. Nice. Uh, I guess that's my second attack, but Donnie. Yep. Um, maybe we'll fly up and try and, like, chomp on one of them spideys. Sure. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, you guys. Let me just, like, he definitely chomped it. Just, I, it's been so long <laughs> since Donnie actually hit anything, I can't remember what his plus is to his attack roll. But uh, Donnie got a 21. Whoa, Donnie. Donnie. Does that hit oh, the spidey? Man. Yep. Oh, it's amazing. Get ready for not very much damage. Sorry, he's just a little guy. Uh, five damage, okay. and he has to do a con saving throw. Yeah, it sure does. Oh, come on, Donnie. Put this giant-ass spider to sleep. This will be like, five. the best thing. It's a five. Uh, hmm, 11, saving throw by five or more. The target falls unconscious for one hour. Nice. Yeah. God. Now we need two guys to come and pick it up and oh like my God. gently place it or like fluff it like a blanket. Like a, like a small like child. A, like a toddler on this a sword. Uh-huh. Um, I honestly, I don't remember if this has ever actually happened before. Maybe once before you put someone to sleep. So it is similar to the sleep spell, I think, in our other game where it, he's unconscious. He's been poisoned. But if someone shakes him awake he will wake yeah. up so he's not like mm-hmm. in a coma or yeah. anything or right? does like physical damage to him right? yes yes so Donnie right now like I don't know has a boner he's so excited like how did Donnie's this happen like this, no, he's just all flying around seriously like that is a giant giant spider it's amazing I'm very proud of him way to go Donnie alright sorry I'm just trying to find hit points here. It's okay, I was just talking about Donnie's boner. It probably wasn't really... <laughs> uh, it was great. You are really missing a lot there. Uh, okay. Flint, you're up. All right. Um, you are restrained. Okay, I guess I should roll to see if I can get out of that first off. Yep. 
That is a 19 plus all my bonuses. So you, I think I'm yeah, good. Yeah, you bust free from said webbing. He wants to Excellent. break free. Um, can you let me know like what's in front of me, Russ? Yep. Your friends? Like, where, where are all these spiders? Are they above us? Uh, the spiders are in the trees. Except that one uh, that fell down. Except that one that is now sleeping on the ground. Nobody's at it. Uh, or unconscious, <laughs> rather, not Leave sleeping. Leave it alone. Um, so you got Put three a giant glass caps. over top of it. <laughs> uh, Flint, you were in front, so you are the farthest from them. So, but you can you can still make it there. Um, there, yeah, you're probably about thirty feet out. Okay. Um, and the guys above us in the trees. How many of them are there? S- uh, six up in the trees. One unconscious on the ground. And are any of them within like five feet of the other ones? And how high up in the trees are they? They're probably about 15 feet above you. Okay, perfect. And any, like, clumped together? Uh, no, they're pretty well spread out. Um, what, are you, what are you looking for? What do you want to do? Oh, I can't wait. Well, t- I'm thinking... What kind of vertical leap does I, Flint have? I, I use that uh, lightning breath that's just sitting in my chest waiting to be let out. Oh, yeah. It's Remember been a long you can do time that? since the lightning breath. What's the... Uh, what's the, uh, the cone or range or whatever on that um, one? Um, the lightning is 5 by 30 foot line. So that's why I asked if any of them are within like 5 feet of one another. You could hit possibly 3 of them shooting up and straight into the trees there. Well, let's do that then. Okay. Uh, the save you have to make, Russ, is a 15 and it's a dex save. Dex on the spiders. Dex on the spider. Has been there before. Uh, Dex three. So we'll go one, two, three. So that's eight, seventeen, sixteen. So okay, so two of them save. Um, yep. On the fail, it's three d six, and the other ones are half of that. Okay. I'm <laughs> crying, trying not to laugh at Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> the Mr. Belvedere theme song. <laughs> and six is 13. Oh, God. Flint, you reach from within you and emit the line of lightning, the dragon breath that comes from deep within you, and it strikes some of the legs of two of these spiders as they skitter out of the way, striking the third dead center. It takes the brunt of the damage. Excellent. And I guess that's my second attack. So yep. I will just chill there. Well, maybe I'll move in front of everyone, but not all the way to the Edder Caps. So Nulara is engaged in combat with the Edder Caps? Oh, all right. Yeah, then I'll just go a little closer, but not all the way there. Okay, got it. Flamikins, you're up. Well, let's uh, just fucking do it. Light them up. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so Flamikins... Um... You just tell me what Flamikins does, and I'll act it out yes, for you. Yes, yes, okay. Um, this reminds me of a time when I was on a ship, <laughs> and, I, and there were there was not spiders specifically, but it was rats. But there was that super cool car, uh, dice game that everybody understood. Mm-hmm. Oh man, we had just finished playing. We weren't. Even, they didn't even let us finish the dice game. I mean, it was like one of those. It went on for like six days. One of those kind of dice games. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay. She's going. She's going to use infestation. It's an instantaneous attack where a cloud of mites, fleas, and other parasites appear mm-hmm. around a spider that I choose in the air. I don't care which one; they're all kind of up there, except for the one that's on the ground, right? Yeah. Okay, and um, so they must succeed on a Constitution saving throw, or it takes two d six poison damage and moves five feet in a random direction okay. and i choose that by rolling a d4 yep so constitution uh that's a five okay well the damage is only four and i roll a d4 uh so north it goes higher let's say south it drops lower okay and then east and west so sure. north is one south yep. is two east is three west is four uh, east, so it moves five feet eastward. That spider is over here. <laughs> a little bit to the other way. Just, just a little bit. Just shifts over. It, it makes a scurrying noise as Flamikin screams out, Take that! Bugs! Take those bugs! Bug! Bitch! 
Bug the bitch. Bug bitch. The old bug, bug, bug bitch. Bug bitch. Fuckers. Oh wait, hold on. Sorry. <laughs> Pause. I'm allowed to use Fury of the Small with an attack or a oh, spell. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. And the creature yeah. size is larger than yours, which I'm assuming giant spiders uh, are. They are large beasts. Yep. So I'm a small creature. Yep. Um, the damage equals your le- the extra damage equals your level. So plus 10 damage. Nice. Ha ha. Okay. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. What, do you, got, what do you got there, Thaddeus? Oh, he should probably roll to see if he can get out of those spider webs, though. If you want. I mean, he is restrained. Oh, well, I guess it doesn't matter. I'm not going anywhere. Uh, do you want me to tell you what restrained does? Does so it make me more, like, susceptible to hit? Yeah, attack rolls I'm have... Gonna a, roll. Yeah, <laughs> attack rolls have advantage, and... Oh, we'll sh- crit 20! Okay, so yeah, you're out. Yeah, is, is the Edder Cap that uh, New Lara is fighting, like, do I have a clear line of sight? New Lara's a little bit in front of Thaddeus... Um, and the Edder Cap, but there is a clear line of sight to uh, another Edder Cap. Okay, let's go for the other Edder Cap then. I'm okay. going to uh, use my cantrip of Firebolt. Okay. And I'm going to hurl some fire at him. And since I'm a level 10 character. Yeah. Oh, no, it's level 5 that I get the bonus and level 11. Wah, wah. Well, it's a 2d10 anyway. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, uh, so that's a 17 and 6, so that's 23. Yep, that'll hit. All right, get ready for 2d10 damage. Nine and ten. Damn, good Ooh, rolls, Thaddeus. dude. Thaddeus releases a ball of fire towards the Edder Cap that strikes it in its core, and it lets out an ungodly scream. Is Thaddeus moving anywhere? Or is he? He's uh, no, up? he's gonna he's gonna stay stationary right there. Thea, you're up. You're gonna love this. Yeah. Yeah. I like that grin, Amy. Mm-hmm. So. I'm excited. Um, Thea is going to cast Conjure Animal, and she is going to conjure eight wolves. Oh, my God. Hold on. That's a lot of wolves. It What's... is a lot of wolves. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Because they're... my yeah. wolves are medium beasts. They're only a challenge rating of... you got to keep track of all eight of your wolves. I need a... I need a pencil and a paper. <laughs> Didn't plan this one out, did you? I'm not keeping not. track of eight wolves. <laughs> Closing her eyes and calling on the energy that surrounds her, Thea emits a green light that begins to form eight incorporeal wolves that surround your position and begin to close in on the edder caps. Can I ask you a personal question? It's a personal question of Thea. Oh, yes. <laughs> did you did you conjure wolves because you're hoping Delane's going to like happen along and be like, oh, she's so wolfy. She's so... Yes. Okay. <laughs> it's, well, you know, I'm hoping he, you know, stops by. <laughs> so why, not? why not just practice being a little bit wolfy? A little extra wolfy. A little extra wolfy. I like it. I like it, Thea. Uh, Thanks for letting me ask you that personal question. <laughs> no problem. Are you, like, yelling me that in battle, like, Thea, <laughs> hope and totally. delay comes along? <laughs> totally. And I'll be like, shut up, of- new Lara, shut Wait, up. Um, just It'll fight, be like in God. the Lord of the Rings when uh, Legolas and Gimli are counting up the orcs that they're killing. Yeah. Yeah. Instead, she'll just be like, are you summoning wolves to get a date? Yep. <laughs> sure am. Uh, Trying, girl. Okay. Trying. Edder Caps are going to attack some bitches here. Um, Edder Cap hey, on New Lara. <laughs> We're the bitches. <laughs> I know. Wait a minute. Uh, oh, that's not very good. So good. that's Perfect. a seven. Perfect. That hey. does one hit. going for Flint is an eighteen. Uh, what kind of attack do they make? Magic. No, I don't know. <laughs> like um, they, he's is like, it a fight? is it like uh, bludgeoning? He, it is using its web garrote, so it's going to be bludgeoning. Okay. Yeah, eighteen will hit. Yeah, it will. So you're gonna take. Well, if it was slashing, uh, it wouldn't have hit, so I had to make sure. It, it's true. Uh, you're it's gonna right, take nice. only three bludgeoning damage, but in the butt, you you are grappled <laughs> uh, in the butt. Damn butt damage. <laughs> three in the butt damage. Usually, Thea gets the butt damage, so this is good. Someone else. Yep, um, but you are grappled, and because you are grappled with a web garrote, you can't breathe. Um, oh, that's fun. And the Edder Cap has advantage on attack rolls against you. So the final... Is it just because it saw my lightning breath and was like, I gotta shut that shit down. <laughs> right? Makes sense. Right? 
Uh, so Thaddeus uh, is also web garroted because that's a twenty, not not critical. So Thaddeus is going to take um, five bludgeoning damage, and he is also grappled and cannot breathe. Okay, now how can we solve that situation of breathing? <laughs> um, well, there is the there is an escape DC. Um, okay, I'm assuming get, on our turn though. On your turn, yep. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, new Lara, you're up now. Back to the top. Okay. Um, <clears throat> then I will continue to attack that Edder Cap that I was attacking. Uh, that was, uh, that is a 30. <laughs> <laughs> Surprisingly, hit? doesn't, doesn't hit. Oh, Sorry. no. Oh, he, like, like I some, said, like, it was a magic armor yeah, or something. Yeah, just kind of... It's Iron Man did out there. Yeah, no, that hits. Fuck, okay. that hits. Uh, okay, so that is 12 damage on that first attack. Yep. And second attack is a 27. I would assume that hits. Yep. 5, yep. 7, 11, 13 damage on that one. Uh, Donnie just like feeling so pleased with himself so pleased with himself is uh gonna try and chomp another spidey do it donny he's not gonna do it probably because that's a 13 13 does not hit okay can't win them all buddy we believe in you still flint you're up you have an uh, you have an editor you are garroted grappled and not breathing at the hands of an editor cap the GG like my, and B. My beard isn't even providing me some sort of relief from the garrote. It snuck it up underneath the beard. Oh. Yeah. It's impressive Got in, attacking. It's in real close, real tight. Okay. Um, so what do I, what, what am I rolling? Like, Good question. Strength? Con? Wisdom? Please don't say wisdom. Wisdom. Definitely wisdom. <laughs> How do I get out of this? Uh, no, you gotta make a, an escape DC. Just roll a d20. Oh, okay. Ooh. <clears throat> uh, 14 14 you get out yeah. so the grapple ends you have you have your breath rush back to you for holding it for one second you're very out of, out oh, of shape that was tough that was yeah. tough I require a lot of oxygen so yeah. um, those big muscles. well I'm going to uh, turn around and swing my axe into this enter cap several times do it uh, it's a crit 20 Nice. Uh, doesn't hit, surprisingly. Oh, man. <laughs> These enter are out of control. <laughs> All right, so that's going to be 4d10 plus, uh, what's my damage bonus? Mm-hmm. Two? Four? I have to scroll down. Sorry, Mark Zach. Uh, okay, 4d12 plus four. Woo! Okay, okay here we go. Us. 33 damage. Fucking A, dude. The edder cap you've attacked lets out an enormous shriek as you cut into its flesh with this huge, brutal hit. Okay, second attack. Uh, that's a 20, but not critical. Yeah, that will still hit. 17. You, uh, tell me how you, uh, how you kill this edder cap. Uh, after my rage-filled first attack with, uh, the criticalness... I see he's uh, a little worse for wear, and I chop him right in, like, where his hip and uh, leg meet up, and just sever his leg and the artery that goes with it, and he goes down in a, in a heap. I will find some, like, blood-spurting sound effect. Excellent. Perfect. Yeah. That's I mean, good. it was good Foley work. So. Thank you. Yeah, if I can't find anything better, that's what I'll use, but... Okay. Um, okay. Uh, you, you, you good there? Flamekins, you're up. All right. Let me flip to my page in my book. <laughs> okay. Well, she's got all this stuff. Okay. She's got a lot of stuff. She's a sorcerer. It's just wild. It comes to her. It's just like I'm feeling the power. <laughs> I okay. love this NPC, by the way. Oh, yeah. She's great. This reminds me of a time when I was on a ship <laughs> and I had my spell choked out. <laughs> yep. Uh, what else happened? I was ready to go and my turn came up. Fuck <laughs> off. I murdered the fuck. I'm gonna acid splash the DM. Cracking. I mean, 
<laughs> this is like some excellent meta commentary. I know it really takes way longer. This is amazing. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm going to Flamykins uh, conjures up a bubble of acid, chooses one of the spiders, like mm-hmm. in the middle, uh, because mm-hmm. there's one a... one of them right over top of you, so it splashes down on top of you. No, mm, just checking. I'm thinking as both an NPC and a DM here. It's just trying to make sure everybody gets damage. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, she throws it up and makes sure to um, to hit a creature like yeah. uh, within five feet of sure. each other. She wants to hit two. She's trying to hit two mm, with this bubble. Yeah, sure, you can do that. Um, and the target must succeed on a dexterity saving throw or take two d6 damage. Well, this didn't work out well for them last time, I don't think. Yeah, but my my. Damage roll was stupid too, so. Right. Gotta hate those stupid rolls. Stupid so rolls. Stupid. Okay, Ugh. giant spiders have the. Th- 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 so you're trying to hit two. So that's a 21 and a 22. Okay, fine. They don't get any damage. No. Boo. It was a good try. We heard that great been, song from Flaming Kids, so six. it was worth it. It really was worth it just for that. Guys, this never happened to me before. Mm-hmm. Uh, Thaddeus, you are grappled and not breathing. For five, yep. for nearly five seconds at this point, super tough. All right, I uh, should probably roll to get out of that then. Yep. Uh, Eighteen. That'll do her. Excellent. Sh- he shimmies free from the Ettercap's garrot. Perfect. Uh, I'm going to uh, swing my warhammer into the Ettercap that was strangling me. Sure. So that is a twenty-three. Sweet! Eight plus two is ten. Thaddeus wriggles free and spins with such grace and brings down his war hammer on the head of the Edder Cap with a sickening crunch. Uh, wolves, you're up. Ow! That's what they say. I'm going to get four of the... There's two Edder Cats, right? Edder Caps. Yep. One in front of new Lara that looks like it's being beaten up pretty good. And one on Thaddeus, which is less beat up good. Uh, well, we are going to go. We're, I'm going to split the party. I'm going to say you four, and I point over to Nulara's Edder Cat, and, and I point you four over to mm-hmm. uh, Thaddeus's Edder Cat. And the first four, and they go to bite because that's what they do. Yep. Okay, so the first one gets an 18. Yep. 15. Yep. 16. Yep. Two. Nope. <laughs> There's such a drop off. All <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, so then for damage for those. So is this damage for all, all three? Um, we'll see how good it is. Let's, sure. Uh, okay. So Edder Cap gets four damage. Six damage. Four, five, six. So six damage. Ooh. Plus ten damage. So sixteen. Mm-hmm. Plus. Nine damage, so that's twenty-five damage. That that edder cap uh, is is pulverized, shredded, dead. They're not eating Gone. it; they're just ripping it apart because yep. these edder caps look edder cap gross. everywhere. All wow. right, how about that second edder cap? Second edder cap. Uh, twelve plus four, sixteen. Yep. Seventeen yep. plus four, twelve. Nope. 18. Yep. All right, so same sitch. Even if you roll all ones, it's dead. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> the tear it apart with the so ferocity. You, so the th- eight wolves, wolves come in and swarm these two edder caps and just just churn out edder cap meat. It's just flying everywhere. Because Bruce. these are... These are these, They've been put yeah. through my wolf grinder. Yeah. And I look up um, to the spiders and I go, you're next. Um, the spiders see this and flee into the trees and run oh, away. That makes me feel very gross. It's a pretty solid I, plan on their part. Because I know they're still out there. I know. It's like when you see a really, really big spider in your house and it's like, <laughs> and then you don't see it. It's so much worse. Cause like I, you go to get something it? extra heavy yes, yes. to smush it with. You and come back and it's not there. And you know it's still in the house and like, mm-hmm. it's watching me right now. Mm-hmm. Well, those oh. university textbooks have to be good for something. <laughs> yes, they do. Hey there. 
I'm your dungeon master, Russ Moore. Thank you for joining us for episode 36 of Dungeons and Dragons, titled Knock Knock, Anyone Home? Part 1. A couple quick notes about this episode, because we did a couple things differenter than usual. First, Tom, Carla, and Amy added new feats to Flint, Nulara, and Thea. And normally with feats, uh, feats are different features that characters can get to have different improvements in different skills um, and in normally in D&D 5e you have an option as you move up in levels to either take an ability score modifier at specific levels or take a feat and this could have happened twice for the characters but we didn't do that going through and knowing that they're going into some difficult storytelling um, I had them add those two feet options and then going forward they will have the option at the regular levels like normal. So just if you hear something that's like, whoa, when did they get that crazy bonus or that crazy skill? That's probably what it is there. Um, we will be releasing a public bonus episode where we talk about this in the future um, on our Patreon page. But right now I have to hold on to it because we also talk about some elements that we recorded out of sync with our current story. So there are spoilers in that content. And I know what's happening over there. Jeez. So sorry about that. I'm sure it will come up in future episodes, and I'll try to remember to get everyone to explain as things come up. I will try, but otherwise, there will be a future bonus episode that uh, will first be available on Patreon and then to the public, where we explain absolutely everything that we added to them. Second note is this episode and the next part two of this episode were originally recorded as one episode, but it was it was too long, over two hours, so I split it, and we will release an early episode next week to finish up this session, and then be back on track the following week. Uh, I mean, our mistake means more episodes for you, though. Hey, that's good, right? Yay! Okay, I just want to again give you the details from our friends at the Liberty Podcast. You can pick up their newly released sci-fi post-apocalyptic RPG system, Liberty After, at libertyendures.com or drive through rpg.com. I've picked up mine already. It's only 15 bucks. I had it printed and bound, and I'm looking to play a game now. It looks like so much fun, honestly. Liberty After has 150 pages featuring... Over 30 new classes and weapons, dozens of new special abilities, deities, poisons, enemies, and those sweet misfire charts. The best part about Liberty, though, is you can submit your stories that you create with their system at your table to possibly have them immortalized in the world's official canon. And you might even find your characters in future comics, graphic novels, or podcasts that the Liberty team creates. They have a relatively new podcast. They have uh, three episodes out by the time this releases. And that podcast is called Liberty Vigilance which is an actual play audio drama within their after system. We talked about it off the top of the episode. It's amazing. You should go check that out. And you can find it wherever you download podcasts um, and find all the details about their Liberty After System, the RPG system, at libertyendures.com or drivethroughrpg.com. And while you're on the interwebs, I invite you to check out our Patreon community page, patreon.com slash dumbdragoncast. There you can sign up to be part of the Dumb Dragon Cast community and get in on some of the amazing, awesome rewards and perks. And some of those rewards include amazingly fun Patreon bonus episodes. We will be getting close to starting a new story in the next couple months using the Fate Core system. Right now, Tom is running his own D&D game, and we're having a blast with that. Um, but I'm really looking forward to uh, to the new one that we're playing. It's a new system. None of us have ever played it before, so it'll be a learn along with us and uh, as we create uh, a story and some cool characters that you can follow along with. And there are also monthly goog hangs that you can get in on where you can come hang out with the whole crew from Dungeons & Dragons, ask us questions, or just say, hey... Our next Goog Hang is uh, Tuesday, April 24th, and only for patrons at the $5 plus tier. So make sure you check it all out. And I guarantee to you that joining the Patreon community really does help make the show better with each episode. We've been able to upgrade some of our equipment, make sure everyone has the books they need, and use better music and sound effects to bring the show to life. So thank you to all of our patrons, and thank you for considering joining us. So again, please visit patreon.com slash dumbdragoncast and see if there's a place for you. All of our social media links can be found on our website, dumbdragons.com, and I would especially encourage you to join us on our new Facebook group. We always have a great time over there sharing cool stories and different ideas about playing RPGs and uh, what you can get out of it as a game for yourself. It's small, but getting bigger every week, and there are a ton of amazing people to chat about the game and the show with right now. Links for everything mentioned today can always be found in the description below. 
The next episode will be out April 18th with part two of Knock Knock. Anyone home? And we'll also be announcing a new contest next week where you can maybe win a sweet tome from Mordenkainen. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. Make sure you listen to next week. But let's head back to the waterfall and see how close our adventurers can get to getting up close and personal with some dragon scales. Have a great week. We'll talk to you soon. Okay, so you guys uh, dispatch of the editor caps and the spiders, and you still have a little ways to go. Well, let's keep going. My wolves are coming with us. How long do you get to keep your wolves for? That is an excellent question. I get to keep Forever. my wolves. Forever. They're Forever. Just part they're of mine. They're my family. Uh, I get to keep these wolves for up to an hour. Okay. Um, yeah. So you uh, continue burning your way and slashing your way through the uh, through the webbing. And after another, about another hour, you come to... <laughs> my wolves go... No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It's not an hour. <laughs> Uh, it only takes you about, I don't know, 15 or 20 minutes to get to the... <laughs> uh, that's funny. <laughs> and then you trip, and you break some potion or something? I'm not sure. <laughs> Things go real bad for you guys. That fight went well, but shit. You break your ring of You wanted holding. this. What is it? Ring of spell? My what spell holding. Yeah, it's you just broke a it, sorry. Ring of yeah, spell. smashed it. Now that you it's remembered broken. you have it, it's gone. <laughs> uh, no, you come to a large clearing where there is a, a lake at the base of a what looks to be an approximately 100-foot waterfall. It's beautiful, you guys. It's beautiful. It's majestic. The surface of said lake is obscured by an emerald green haze, and all around there, uh, you, it looks to be a worn down kind of pathway of sorts um, that goes all the way around up to where the physical waterfall is. And it is, I should remind you about the time it is, it is um, now just past sunset. So it is nighttime now. What do you want to do? I don't mind fighting at night. Well, I can't see in the dark, so I'd prefer not to fight at night. <clears throat> I also prefer not to scale behind waterfalls in the dark, if that's what we're going to be doing. Uh, I know that's the lame answer, like, I'm, not, I'm no, tired. I'm <laughs> Let's have a sleep. Um, but Nulara is not at her, has no dark vision or anything, right? So mm -hmm. definitely is not at her best in darkness. That being said, if you guys are all like keen to go, we can we can keep it rolling. You can camp outside. <laughs> she they gets first dibs if Delane shows up though. I'm just oh saying. shit. No. Oh damn. <laughs> uh, do we we don't see any um like creatures or movement? There is seems to be no creatures or movement. I mean, I know unless you want to do like a, spiders in the woods, but yeah, you know, um, aside from the spiders that you hear, just their eyes just glaring at you around. from yeah. Just no, what is it? Skittling around. Skittling, skittling around. around. Yeah, lots of skittling. Um. Uh. But yeah, if you guys want to go, like I don't know, convince me. <gasps> I don't want to make you do anything you don't want to do. Uh, well, no, but we can wait. Um, it would give it would give Delane extra time to hopefully catch up because having one more person fighting with us, if we do happen to find this dragon, mm -hmm. we are going to fight a dragon. That's true. I mean, the dragon does take off at nighttime, though. Correct. True. Yeah, it could just see us out here in the clearing. <laughs> And I well, don't want to go back in there with those spiders. That's all I, I gotta say. I assume we are going to um, be sneaky. Hold on, I feel like I have some sort of skill where I'm good at... Uh... It's called Pass Without Trace. <laughs> no, it's not that. It's something else that I got um, that is... Um, yeah, I have a skill called Hide in Plain Sight, so I am good at uh, camouflaging. Yeah. So what I don't. How I picture hide in plain sight works is mid conversation. Every once in a while, Nulara just fucking disappears. And no one knows where she went. She's just tired of people at that moment, yeah. and it's just like no, I just ghosts into the background. Okay. Um, but it gives a a plus ten to 
dex if I don't take an action. It's just camouflaging, basically, right? Like, I yeah. can spend a minute, like, using the things around to hide the things. So, in theory, we could probably have, like, a low-key camp. And in fact, saying that the dragon escapes at night, like, we don't actually know that it is behind this waterfall. It's not a bad idea to, like, chill down here and see if it flies out. That's, That's true. true. Right? I just didn't want us to, like, miss our chance. Me too. Could one of us go and just check it out? Do a little recon? You tell me. He uh, would like to go ahead. Thea's got dark vision. She could wild shape into something, fly up behind okay. the waterfall, see what's going on. How high up is the entrance? Is there an entrance behind this waterfall? I want to say yes, considering there's like a worn path uh, uh, to yeah, be totally. behind the waterfall. Uh, but maybe this cavern is lit with braziers or torches or something. I like this fly up and do recon thing. Remember, you used to do this all the time. You were like yeah, turning into rats, like little, and sneaking little in rats with it? and geckos yeah. and stuff. Yeah, I remember um, that. Like getting back to my roots. That seems like a good idea. And then we'll have a better idea, right? If it looks like shit, yeah, and they're all sleeping. Let's fucking go, right? <laughs> yeah, let's kill them in their sleep. I like it. Exactly. I have no problem with that. They've been burning villages and murdering, so... Yeah. Um, okay. Also, I would love to run in, like, if, if we're able to run in right now, if it's good, you know, if it's a good situation, I'd love to be able to run in with my wolves. Exactly. But if it's too high up, who knows? So, yeah. we'll, we'll see. But you can, like, suss the path and stuff. I, I dig this idea. Okay, so I do that. I will... What's the range on your wolves? Uh, 60, 60 feet, 60 so feet. I can get them to come with me to the base of the waterfall, and then I'll fly up. Okay. And look in the... If that's... Sure. Well, like, well, if yeah. if that is within range, sure. If not, I guess I, I will just have to say goodbye. <laughs> sure, no, they can they can come up as close <laughs> to as close to the entrance as you, as you want them to go. It is a pack of eight wolves. And when you're trying to be super sneaky. Wolves are super stealthy. Well, I'm going to make you roll for them if that's what, if you're getting them super close. Ah, plus four to stealth. Okay. Um, so Thea is going to turn into, she's going to wild shape uh, into an owl because night vision, hello. Mm -hmm. Almost silent wings when flying. Yes. Snazzy that. little uh, mortarboard hat. Yes, please. <laughs> Being able to turn my head all around, constantly asking one question. Mm -hmm. okay. Spitting up mouse pellets. Mm -hmm. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> this is the life. Uh, so I turn into. Uh, I think first we just. I, I turn into an owl and I send four of my wolves. How big is this lake? Because I would um, like to send four of my wolves on one side for it. Because, I mean, a pack of eight is going to invariably be a lot more easy mm -hmm. to spot than four wolves slinking along in sure. the darkness. Um, They're like, black wolves, by the way. Didn't say it before, but... Yeah. Excellent. I wanted them to be extra scary. Uh, so the lake itself is about 150 feet across. The It narrows to about 45 feet on either side of the waterfall, though. Okay, so, so could kind I of send them... Out. Is it too far? Are they going to disappear in the middle? Uh, well, at one point, they're going to be 145 feet away from you, so yes. Oh, okay. Then all of us will go together. Yep. Roll for stealth ability. Yeah, so just do one. Um, yes, plus four, so that's okay. a 13. Yeah, so how close are you going before you turn into an owl? I turn into an owl immediately. Okay. Um, yeah, so you, you and your pack of wolves... Uh, go up, and you come right to the edge of the waterfall, and you fly in behind, and there is an opening. Are you going in? Um, sorry, so there's an opening, so it's just waterfall, and same level as the ground, just a cave. Uh, well, there, there are no steps up and in, it's just... Uh, yeah, it's a bit up and off the, off the How ground. How many feet up? It's there about... Steps to get up there? Uh, no, it's a straight cliff, but it's only 15 feet high. Okay. Uh, yeah, I fly up and and in. I kind of perch on the edge. I don't just woo, fly in. I, I fly up and like I'm like I'm just a little barn owl, just like 
I'm tired and I need to rest on the edge so, of this. So you uh, a get in cave. behind this waterfall. Yeah. Yeah. You <laughs> land there on the edge and you look and you see a steep slope that descends down from the cave behind the waterfall. Um, and it uh, goes and bends around a corner. Do I see any torches? Is it just darkness? Uh, there are no torches. How far in can I go before I get too far from my wolfies? Um, right now you are about 20 feet from them. So you could go another 40 feet before the spell would. I, I go to my max. I go 35 feet because I want a little buffer. <laughs> yeah, uh, you fly down this slope a little ways and find a, a rocky cliff to kind of perch on and you can see down um, in that it opens up into what looks to be a larger area but you can't quite see all the way around the corner without going any further. And again, no lights. No torches or anything. Alright, I fly back. Okay. Naturally. So you fly back to your friends and your wolves mm-hmm. follow you? Yep. Yeah. And I just spend, like, the next hour snuggling them and stuff. Like, I, I turn back into a human. <laughs> well, what have we done before um, well, yeah, I do. <laughs> when we go into these dark... Like, certainly this is not the first time we have <laughs> been in a dark place that Nulara can't see in. I uh, just hold usually, on to somebody. You yeah. usually I'm light wondering. up your sword is what you usually yes. do. It's not, so st- it's not, not really that sneaky, though. I mean, Donnie can see in the dark and can, like, can, um, talk to me telepathically, but he also flies, right? So he isn't really going to be that helpful? I think that's what you've kind of done in the past. I, I, I think so, too. Um, but yeah, typically, I guess I can just, like, light my sword because we're, like, trapped in a dungeon or something. It's not like we're trying to be, like, super sneaky. Yeah, someone already knows we're there. Uh, are yeah. you guys uh, just kind of standing at the edge of the lake? Or are you tucked away? What? Uh, give me your. What's your? Um. Yeah, I think we were like, uh, like, near the edge of the woods. Like, you know, we're trying to be sneaky. We don't yep. like have a fire or anything. We're just chilling, quietly chilling. Thea flies back and tells you what she didn't see. Uh, more than more than anything, mm. um, and as you guys are kind of discussing of you know how to get New Lara to see, um, you hear a um, a padding of feet coming up behind you. Son of a bitch! Just kidding. I don't say that out loud. That was out of character. Uh, it might be Dane and his wolf. Here's hoping. Here's hoping. Yeah. So you turn around and you do see Laska come up behind you. Yeah, Laska. Are the wolves still there? Are they like? Are they like playing? Like, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> you know, like dogs do. You know, uh, you know how I dogs think, play. Yeah, I think, I think they, they, you no, know, they're like very well behaved. They, they sit and they and stay. wag their tail. I, I assume uh, Laska is like dominant because isn't she gigantic? Yeah, <laughs> isn't she a giant it's wolf? A yeah, these, giant these wolves wolf. are just kind yeah, of like, like here's your di- standard. Yeah. Think dire wolf. Yeah, of, that's what yeah. I thought. Yeah, it, he Laska comes up and uh, says, "We meant to meet you, but um, we got uh, ambushed by the dragon, and Delane is in there now." Oh shit! In there? He, yes, yes. In in I, I there. I point to the I point to the waterfall. Yes, he's behind the waterfall. Was he I've, injured when they took him? Uh, yeah, he was beat up uh, quite a bit and carried off by the dragon. And the man with the dragon... Well, that didn't sound like the end of a sentence. I thought you were about to tell us know, something about too. the man saying... with the dragon. And the man with the dragon... <laughs> I was like, had my pencil Taken off poised. by the dragon. Tattoo. The man and with the, the man tattoo. with the dragon. Oh, and the man... <laughs> what? <laughs> It, it's a wolf. Yeah. It's not. It's talking, but it's not going to have complete, proper sentences. Uh, okay, that makes man, sense. So man, t- man, and dragon take, take. Wolves delaying. no common. Yeah, but they're intelligent. Creatures. I am speaking very good. I'm a wolf. <laughs> yeah, he speaks God. common, but he just isn't really a good talker. No. Common is right at this point. 
Look, Miss Highbrow. Academy Award winner, Common? Yeah. <laughs> yes, <laughs> always. Um, was uh, was it just the dragon and the man, or who else was with them? Sub question: When did this happen? Uh, this happened about a day ago. We were doing some uh, some recon at some other settlements, um, and. Uh, we had come within range of one that hadn't been attacked yet, and we were ambushed by just the dragon and um, a man riding the dragon. There was no other horde that has been said to have come along with um, to come along with the dragon. What kind of uh, attacks did the man use? Were they magical or the man didn't really use any attacks. Uh, the dragon did most of the fighting. Okay. You guys want to kill a dragon? I mean, yeah. What oh, else did I come along for? Holy shit! Flamekins. Just, just, just say. I would Does like Thaddeus Thaddeus and Flamekins have, have a little more. Uh, yeah, totally. Uh, I keep, I keep Thaddeus forgetting. has a lot of spells. What are you looking for? Uh, something that can make me see in the dark. Thaddeus might have mm. dark vision. Um. Oh yeah, and like, can him and Flamekins see in the dark? Because if uh, I Thaddeus can't, but Flamekins. He doesn't have any, like, true sight or anything to help him. Um, Thaddeus has what's called Dark Vision Spell, which he learned from uh, Grancis' book of spells that he now has equipped. Ooh. Oh, yeah, there it is. Oh, look at that. Mm. Magic. Imagine that. (laughs) So, yeah, he could cast two of those and still have one third level spell on himself and uh, New Lara. Okay, yeah, we might Let's, as well cast those. Do you do you want to though? Like if we're going in, you might want to save those spell slots for to fight the dragon. Thea makes a very good point, which is that we're going to fight a fucking dragon, so how much is that sneak attack really going to benefit us? Well maybe not we that can, much. If we can do a bunch of things at once, it might benefit us a lot. Because you but guys still it, have those like crazy dragon killing arrows, correct? Uh, I do have some. So, I mean, like, if we can launch a bunch of shit all at once... Is that how it works? That real good. Do we all get a sneak attack? Mm, well, there's no technical sneak attack thing unless you're a... A rogue. A rogue. Right. Um, so, no. Like, you would have... <laughs> you would be... You would use stealth to be sneaky getting in there, and you may have, like, a first go at initiative. Right. But it wouldn't, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, I guess it's up to Thaddeus because it's his spell, so... Um, Laska, has the uh, has the dragon left for the night? Because we know that the dragon leaves for the night, and Laska says, no, no, the dragon hasn't left yet, but he usually pieces out in, like, about an hour. He checks his watch. Yep. <laughs> it's <laughs> a punctual we'll we'll dragon. Watch. Yep. We know there's watches in this universe, right? Well, if there's oh, trains, there there, there's got to be watches. Because otherwise, how does a conductor keep time and a schedule? Exactly. It's true. Um, well, I don't know. Do you guys want to, like, hunker down out of sight for an hour and hope the dragon leaves and then, like, sneak our asses in there? Or do you want to just, like, go on in? You know, if we wait an hour, sneak our asses in there, heal Delane up, lie and wait. Yeah. Gotta come back. Yeah, I like this idea. However, once the dragon leaves, whatever devastation is caused is That's on us. Well, you, yeah. you guys know that he... He likely leaves at night to go meet with... Oh, right. Gish. Yeah, he, yeah, he wasn't doing attacks at night, right? He was just going to meet with um, Galen. Oh, yeah, but his, his oh, right. Night... Galantin is the lift the operator. Pol- yeah. the pulley man, yeah. yeah his, um, his night's going to be free, though. Because <laughs> Galen... Uh, but true. Took you, Galen is but he not still has to fly there. All, it took you guys all day to run there. So it will take. he will be quicker to get there and back, but... Yeah. We, okay. We will then, still have time. Then let's wait. Yeah, I, I like this plan. Let's wait. Let's have a. That's not even a short rest. Let's just rest and um, go in when the dragon leaves. So you guys hunker down and hide away. Your wolves disappear. Yeah. I pet and, each one of them before they go. Um, approximately, <laughs> uh, approximately an hour later, you hear a. 
loud flapping of wings and a bellowing roar emit from behind the waterfall, and a large green dragon comes out, bursting from the waterfall, water spraying everywhere, with a dark figure on its back, and it flies off into the night. Hey there, podcast listeners. Are you a fan of real play RPG podcasts but tired of the same old crowds of people who take the game maybe a little bit too seriously? Do you yearn for charismatic hosts stopping at nothing to make each other laugh and have a good time? Do you love the sound of local NPCs or quest givers getting harassed to no end? Come listen to the Legion of Renob, a 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons podcast. That's Legion of R E N O B. Listen to us on iTunes or anywhere that your ear holes can find a podcast. Um, did you want to tell them what you f- forgot that you had? And I have a shield. Oh, oh that's fancy. which which increases my AC by two. Oh. That she's just been wearing on her back. <laughs> that just been hanging out with you guys. Are like Cold that's time. probably just decorative. It's no, more I'm... of a ceremonial shield. <laughs> yeah, Fine. it's Fine. it's a wooden shield. Wasn't your um... AC like pretty low? For a long time. Yes. Yeah. And then yeah. I gave her magic fucking armor because I was like, well, she's going to die. Yeah. Yeah. So that, uh, that's, that's really um, funny. That's great, Amy. I love it. Yeah. We know it was a I, long con. You've been pulling this whole time. You totally so, remembered. So, You're just waiting for Russ to so give you magic vulnerable. armor. I just need better armor. Oh, wait. Yeah. I've got this shield, too. Like, now I'm bam, awesome. Bam, bam. Now she has an AC of 18 when she's using her shield. Are so. you fucking awesome. kidding me? That's more than me. But he's That's he's gonna hold it me. to me that I need yeah. to actually. I'm not just automatically equipped with my shield. I need to say it out loud. Like you have to say, "Move right. caliente." Otherwise, you're fighting with a regular sword. I need to say, "I grab right. my shield." Right. That's and yeah, awesome. it would limit your like. You'd have to use one-handed weapons and stuff. So, uh, but spells. I, well, and I don't think you were using a lot of two-handed weapons anyway. I don't. No, I'm because it'd be ranged weapon. So yeah, why would I need well, my shield? Well, your bow is the only two-handed weapon that you potentially yeah. have used, right? Yeah. But then you just put your shield down, and you you should be a ways away, anyways. Yeah. Can she throw it at people, a la Cap America? This is a good question. It it is a wooden shield. Um, yeah. There is no definitive uh, size or shape to it, but I mean, no, no, she can't. Be hard right. for her to have a have my... hit on it to call it back if it's a wooden shield. Yeah, yeah. True. Yeah. I still have my ring <laughs> of spell storing, which now I know how to use. Yeah. So that's we're learning so much. So yeah, much. This is learning. what happens when Russ goes through one of your character sheets with you. <laughs> like, hey, you know you have all this shit that you should be using. Oh. <laughs> nah, I just stick to the five. Yeah. Basic five the things. Tried that I and do. true. Yeah. Fleas and other parasites appear momentarily on one creature I can see within range. I choose one of the spiders from above because, or Flamikins chooses one of the spiders because. Um, well, oh, please. Got a siren going by. Hey, it's not me for once. Yep. Yep. Oh, that's loud. That is loud. Jeez. I thought it was Addison we live crying right up, at first. We live right up the street from the fire hall, so... Mm. Yeah. yeah, it's a good thing we don't record this on Tuesday nights, because the, the volunteer fire department that's like two blocks away from me at 7 p.m. every Tuesday, they <laughs> Just let, let her go. Rip. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and so I'm like, okay, never record on a Tuesday night. <laughs> How about Tuesday? Tuesday sounds good. No! No! Can you show me a picture of an edder cap? Yeah, I'd like that, too. <laughs> yeah, what is an edder cap? While you're doing that, I'm oh, going to turn we have light video. on. It's getting I dark can, in here. You can literally just show us a picture. I know. It's like, all right, we have video. I can do this. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Carla, are, are oh, you okay? I think Carla didn't detach herself from her <laughs> microphone before she left her computer. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I hope Carla died. Carla, are you okay? Oh She's trying to make Amy feel better for her concussion. That's oh an editor. Oh my cat. god. Oh, that was amazing. Oh. Well done, Carla. Here, are you there? There's your editor. I am cat. here. Oh, oh wait, okay. Super he's, gross. He's kind of like a giant flea, kind of. 
Yeah. Oh I my think god. You call everything that's. <laughs> What did we fight before? And you're like, that's like a giant flea. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, I think it was smaller than that. Maybe that's like more like a tick. Uh, Guys, I did turn the light on and I didn't die. (laughs) Did you take your headphones off? I had taken them off, but then somehow like my foot got caught on the string and then it was like (laughs) caught in it. And Russ, I'm so sorry about how... No, that's going to be awesome. Oh, it sounded great. <laughs> it's Dan. It's so crazy, like, off the <laughs> rails peaking audio as I, like, uh, kicked the microphone around the room. So good. <laughs> Fury of the Small. I yeah. have that, too. Yeah, so it's just like... Just in case you're wondering, just personally, like as I, a human. Carla Johnson, like, feel that to my soul. <laughs> yes. <laughs> A spell name has never spoken to me so deeply as Fury of the Small. <laughs> Carla's next character will be a goblin. <laughs> the smallest character possible. Yeah. Uh, 